Hey guys, 22 Plinkster here. In my hands is a Smith & Wesson Model 41 Performance Center. Let me shoot it a few times, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a pretty good shooter. Actually, it's a really good shooter. I've actually had two magazines for this video. That's kind of a rarity for me. All right, Smith & Wesson Model 41. Where to begin? Where to begin? Um, I guess I, it was a couple of months ago that I had a and made a video on my Franken pistol. And I posted a picture on my Facebook page and said, I'm creating the ultimate 22 pistol. And you know, a lot of you guys have seen that video. And one guy, I can't remember his name. I have to look back at the video, um, at, uh, the Facebook post. And one guy said, why don't you just get a Smith & Wesson Model 41 and be done with it? There's no modifications needed. And you know, I, I sat back and thought and I wanted to say something back, but you know what? He's absolutely positively correct. The Smith & Wesson Model 41 has been out for a long, long time, way before I was born. Uh, they started manufacturing the Model 41 in about 1947. Let me rephrase that. They started thinking about the idea in 1947. They didn't start producing the pistol till 1957. It took 10 years to get the pistol exactly the way they wanted it. And I tell you what, I have been asked more about the Smith & Wesson Model 41 and I have heard things from other competitive rimfire shooters about the Model 41 than any other pistol. The pistol has been tried and true and it is still manufactured today. Now, let me say some things about the Model 41. Now, it is a higher end pistol. Uh, it is not your run in the mill. I have seen them in gun shops before, but they're not very common. Uh, the reason why they're not very common is one, the price point, and two, Smith & Wesson doesn't make tens of thousands of these pistols. This particular one is the Performance Center. I don't know this for a fact, but I heard from some people from Smith & Wesson, they only make about three to 500 of the Performance Centers a year. So that's not a lot of handguns to be putting out. So, all right, I got a couple magazines loaded up here. Let's take a few more shots. All right, what can I shoot? All right, start close there. It's almost impossible to miss. <laughs> just like that. I did that on purpose. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't do that on purpose or not. I just missed. Now, this pistol, it, it did take me some getting used to because these grips are a little bit wider than I am accustomed to, but it's still a really good shooter. Let's go across the creek and see if I can ring some steel. Those are some little targets out there. Oh yeah. All right, I feel froggy. I'm gonna try to hit that three inch target right in the middle. I don't know if I can hit it or not. Oh, I did hit it. Ah. Now, it's kind of hard to hold this particular pistol up for a while because <laughs> it does weigh 41 ounces. It's kind of a hefty pistol, but it is a good shooter. Now, the difference between the regular Model 41 and uh, the Performance Center Model 41, it, there's a few, few changes. It does have a uh, adjustable trigger stop that you can adjust yourself and that will allow, uh, it's just what it is, it's a trigger stop. The trigger stop is very important, especially when you do fast shooting and also when you do precision shooting, uh, meaning that the trigger doesn't come all the way back and, and, and make you pull one way or the other. Uh, so I like that feature. That This one I have not touched, it comes straight from the factory. It feels good to me, uh, but some people, they may want to adjust that trigger stop. It does have a uh, milled in rail on the top of the uh, on top of the slide here. 
Um, and I, I like that because this does not move. This, this top section does not move. So I have a little Seymour, what model is this? RTS2. This is a great little, um, this is a great little red dot. It's very clear, it's very precise, it holds zero. Um, you know, I, my buddies at, at, at Smith & Wesson, when they sent me this particular pistol to do a review on, they also sent me this optic, and I really like this optic. Uh, the front sight here is, is pretty high, and it is pinned. So I guess if you wanted to remove this front sight to make it a tad bit lighter, you can do that. It comes in two different uh, barrel lengths. One of those barrel lengths, this particular model is 5.5 inches, and it also comes in seven inches. Uh, they are a awesome, awesome pistol. Now, this Performance Center, the retail on them, I know you guys ask a lot of questions in the comments, you know, how much does one of these particular pistols go for? The retail on this particular pistol is around $1,600. So it is not your entry level 22 pistol by no means, uh, but it is a very good shooter. And if you want to just spend money on one particular pistol, you know, you can't go wrong with the Model 41 at all. So, all right, let's get loaded up here. Now, let me shoot this magazine. I'll tell you a few more things that I have found out about this particular pistol that will probably save you some trouble in the future if you purchase one. All right, the trigger is very quick. You can almost machine gun with this thing. Now, I have found out that I shoot a lot of 36 grain federal bulk, okay? That's mostly what I shoot out of my pistols. Now this particular pistol, you can shoot bulk ammo and 36 grain ammo out of it, but I have found out that if you do that, you're gonna have a few malfunctions. Uh, it was, it's always on the very first shot. I can load a magazine up with just some federal champion 36 grain. The first shot, it will either jam or it will failure to eject or something will happen almost every single time with 36 grain. Now, right now I'm shooting 40 grain uh, standard velocity CCI lead bullets. I have yet to have a, a problem with that, uh, with this particular kind of ammo. I've shot probably 200 rounds of this. I have yet to have a problem with it, but with the 36 grain, closer to a thousand rounds, uh, two bulk boxes out of, through this pistol before I wanted to do the review and I had problems with it. Now. Smith & Wesson probably designed this, I don't know for a fact, but Smith & Wesson probably designed this particular pistol to shoot 40 grain ammo uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, I guess the big reason is most people who shoot competition and most people that shoot bullseye matches, they're shooting 40 grain lead bullets. So I, like I said, I went to the CCI standard velocity 40 grain lead and have not had a single problem out of it. Now, the rear sight on this particular pistol is adjustable for windage and elevation. It has micro clicks, so you can fine tune it. Uh, you know, I, I sighted the sights in. I could hit fine with the sights once they were uh, the open sights on this particular pistol. I, did, I don't need to put a red dot on it. But the cool thing about the 41 Performance Center is the rail. So that's why I put a red dot on it. So load this magazine up, do a little bit more shooting. It's a beautiful day here in Tennessee. Fall, it's about 65 degrees and no better day to do some shooting. All right, let's see here. Let's go way down there. If I slow down, I can actually hit with it. <laughs> but like I said, I can't, I can't say anything bad about the Model 41. And I have spoken to so many people in the rimfire community that, and also shooters, but mostly in the rimfire community, that they have sold their Rugers. They have sold their Browning butt marks. And they've always kept their Model 41. They'll never get rid of their Model 41. Now the Model 41, you know, a lot of people say that it is the Singer sewing machines of 22 pistols, because it is. You know, they don't put out a lot because there's a lot of detail going into the, each and every one of these pistols. A lot of stuff is hand fitted and it's just a precision 22 pistol. So what else can I tell you about it? Oh man, it's just, unless you've ever shot one, you know, videos like, like what I make here on YouTube and uh, also on Full 30, you know, 
I can tell you all, you know, my experience of shooting it, you know, with every firearm that I shoot, whether it be a rifle or a pistol, but until you shoot one of these, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but they are, they are amazing. Now the grip, you know, I did, like I said before in the beginning of the video, the grip did take a little bit to get used to. Uh, it, it's just, it's just a big grip, but I'm beginning to start to like it a little bit. All right, let's go across the creek. Let's finish this video out by trying to hit some steel pretty far off. Oh yeah. All right, let's go with that three incher again. That one always gets me. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, I cannot leave on a miss. I refuse to leave on a miss. After you've been holding it up there, that pistol for about, you know, 20, 25 seconds shooting, it gets heavy. It gets very heavy. And this is, like I said, this is the five and a half inch model. But, you know, I, I have gotten addicted to shooting this pistol. So I have put a lot of rounds through it the past couple of weeks. I've actually had it for probably about four or five months. All right. Here we go. I can't leave on a miss. Just can't do it. Whew. All right. Well, as you can see, the pistol will shoot. And I want to thank Smith & Wesson for giving me the opportunity to firing one of the nicest 22 pistols ever created. And you just don't have to take my word for it. Check out other reviews on the internet and people that own the Model 41. It is to this day known to be one of the finest 22 pistols ever manufactured. Guys, thank you very much for watching the video. And if you have any questions, you can go over to my Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter and ask them there. Until next time, y'all be safe and keep plinking.